<clears throat> Welcome to Elf Hosted. This video will demonstrate why to use UTAR to download YouTube channels to your own personal storage and then how to do this on Elf Hosted. Let's talk about why first. The problem with YouTube is it's full of rubbish. Anything that you watch will be tracked and even if you find the most kid-friendly channels and you lock out what your kids can and can't do, eventually you'll be recommended something you don't necessarily want them to see. UTAR is a tool built by a dad of small children to allow you to curate your own collection of YouTube videos offline. So it downloads the videos from YouTube, saves them locally, and lets you view them in something like Plex. Let's look at how this would work. In UTAR, I'm going to add a channel. This is the Kit Boga channel and add. Right, the channel has been saved. I can now turn on automatic downloads and download everything in this channel or I can just pick one or two episodes I would like to download and click on go. And we're done. It took less than a minute to download two new videos from the YouTube channel and save them locally. The videos now appear in my Plex library where I can play them on my laptop, on my TV, or wherever else I have Plex clients installed. So let's talk about how to set this up now. This is a reasonably complex setup, but we'll keep it very simple for this video. It, you can dig deep and customize it in many ways. I'm going to demonstrate the simplest way to get started. The first thing you'll need, of course, is the Tubeling bundle from Elf Hosted. You can pick a media player. We have a selection of Plex, MB, or Jellyfin. If you're already using Plex, then go ahead with Plex. It's the most polished and the most multi-platform tool, but they do require a subscription for remote streaming. So if you're not a Plex user, consider MB or Jellyfin. In this case, we'll proceed with Plex. Now, it'll cost you a whole $1 to try this for seven days. Thereafter, it'll cost you $19 a month. If the setup is too complicated and you want to just fast track it, you can also add this little wizard, which is a one-time setup where we do the setup for you. The next thing we'll need is a disposable Google account. We say disposable because it's likely that if you hit Utah heavily with automated downloads, YouTube may block your Google account for suspicious activity. So the safest way to proceed is to create a separate disconnected Google account or use one that you don't regularly use for the actual downloads from YouTube. Next, this one may vary depending on your setup, but we're going to suggest a Backblaze account. Because you're downloading movies from YouTube, you need a place to store them. Elf Hosted won't store your data for you. We only run the apps. So you need some sort of cloud storage where you can save these videos too. Backblaze is simple and reliable and easy to set up. So we'll demonstrate that. But you can use any cloud storage with the Tubeling setup. And finally, if you plan to use Plex, you will need a Plex Pass account. So make sure you set up an account on Plex.tv. On PlexTV.plans, you'll find their various subscription offers. This free for all solution won't work in the Elf hosted environment because your Plex server will be remote. So you need either a remote watch pass or a Plex Pass. Now that your dashboard is up, we're ready to start the setup. Let's tackle the cookies first. You'll find written instructions to follow at docs.elfhosted.com. Go to Setup Cookies and note this link to the cookies.txt extension in Firefox. This is the best way I've found to do it. You can do it in Chrome as well, but the installation of an add-on is more tricky because Chrome doesn't let you install add-ons in incognito mode. This is a Firefox private tab, and I have installed the cookies.txt extension. I go to youtube.com and I sign in using my disposable Google account. That's all I have to do. Provided I'm logged in and I'm on YouTube, the necessary cookies are in my browser. I can go to the plugin, go cookies.txt, and I want to download cookies for the current container. Don't use all because that seems to bypass your private window and downloads every account cookie. Current container works fine. Save your cookies file somewhere safe and we'll move on to the next step. You can close the private browser. We don't need it anymore. Next, we're going to set up some cloud storage. Backblaze offer free trial accounts. This is my trial account. Most people would use Backblaze for 
cloud backups of an individual computer. So that's the only service that they enable. But if you go to your account settings, you can scroll down to enable products and choose B2 cloud storage. Now you'll see you have a whole new section here and you can go to buckets, create a bucket, give your bucket a unique name. This is unique globally. So choose something unique to yourself. If you choose something easy like YouTube, it's likely somebody else has already taken that bucket name. Your bucket can be private and create him. Next, you need an application key. The application key is what lets us mount your bucket. Go to application keys. Add a new key. Doesn't matter what you call it. So long as it has access to your bucket, you're fine. If this is a dedicated B2 account just for Utah, you may as well leave this the way it is and create. That's all we need from the Backblaze side. Now we're going to mount our Backblaze storage into your Elf hosted stack. Head back to your Elf hosted dashboard. Scroll down to rclone UI. The first time you open rclone UI, it asks you to log in, but you can just click login to bypass this. We're now going to set up a rclone config, which will tell Elf hosted how to mount your bucket. Go to configs create a new config. We're going to call it B2. Choose your provider. Backblaze B2 will work. Next. These are familiar. Your account ID and application key are necessary. Let's get them from Backblaze. This is my application key. And my key ID is this here. I click next and our clone tells me that I'm done. In the background, we're doing some magic mounting to make this bucket appear as part of your elf hosted stack. So back on your dashboard, go to file browser, our clone, and notice that there's a B2 folder there. Open the B2 folder, there's your bucket. This is 26 years ago, it was created. The fact that we can see the bucket name here tells us that Elf Hosted can correctly talk to your B2 account. And we can confirm this by creating a file in here. You don't have to do this, but it's useful to make sure that B2 is behaving. Now we have one file in our bucket, and if we were to go back to Backblaze, look at our buckets, browse our files, in Harry's Happy Bucket, we have our text file. So now we know the path to which we want to save our YouTube videos. Let's make it a bit cleaner. And under Harry's Happy Bucket, we'll make a folder. And we'll call it YouTube. So we know that this is our path. R clone B2, Harry's Happy Bucket, YouTube. We're going to grab these guys. We don't need the files, but, and we need to tell Utar where it's going to be saving these videos to. Once again, we go to our dashboard. This time we launch Elfbot. Elfbot is our in-house tool that allows us to customize our apps. And in the case of Utar, we customize by setting environment variables. Find Utar, click the three dots, go to environment variables. And you're going to just type in data underscore path equals storage and the path to your storage. In Elf hosted, all storage is prefixed with slash storage. So by setting this environment variable, we're telling Utar this path is where you're going to save all your videos. Edit, save it, and this will cause Utar to restart. Once it's restarted and ready, we can go to the next step. Next, we're ready to set up Plex. We're going to point Plex to the location where the YouTube videos are going to be saved so that it's able to play them back. Plex is a little bit tricky because to set up a new Plex instance, you need to claim it with your 
own Plex account. For this, you'll want to go to plex.tv slash claim, copy the claim code that you get to your clipboard, go back to your Elf Hoster dashboard, and under Plex, with the three dots, you click on Claim Plex Server. Paste in your claim code, click on Claim Server. Again, Plex is going to restart. In a few minutes, it should be up and claimed, which will allow you to now manage your own server. Go back to your Elf Hosted dashboard and launch Plex. It's normal to see this message while Plex is restarting. Once you see this page about how Plex works, you know you're ready to claim your server. Give your server a name. It doesn't matter what you choose here because you're on Elf Hosted, your media will always be accessible outside your home. And under Media Library, this is where we're going to choose our videos. Go other videos, I'm going to call it YouTube. Choose a folder. Now we're going to browse through our file system and we already know the path we need to look at. Storage, R clone, B2, Harry's Happy Bucket, YouTube. And we're done. You can add other libraries with media um, like movies and TV. There are other Elf hosted products to help you with that. I click on Next. And I'm done. We now have a Plex library with all of this Plex streamy stuff that we don't really care about and specifically a YouTube library which is empty. Finally we get to do the fun stuff and use UTAR. All of our preparation is complete. So back to the dashboard and launch UTAR. Launch UTAR. We'll check your configuration to make sure it's good. Because we set that environment variable, UTAR knows where to save its videos. We will turn on automatic downloads. We'll integrate with Plex by opening up the Plex Media Server Integration section. Click on Get Key, Authenticating with Plex, and select a Plex library. Choose the YouTube library that we created and save. This step is optional. But in the case of using Plex, it allows UTAR to tell Plex as soon as new media is available, so Plex can go and scan it in and make it visible to you. Under Cookie Configuration, we need to enable cookies and upload the file and upload the cookie file that you generated. Those are all the mandatory steps. You can tweak your configuration as you go, but for now let's save and do a test. Go to your channels. We're going to add a new channel. For example, if we picked Smarter Every Day, copy the URL of the channel, and paste it in, and click the plus sign. Utah will go and download the channel playlist as well as the logo. We can now click into it and pick some videos to download. Let's say we want them all. 16 videos, please. Go. And we're done. 16 videos downloaded in about 14 minutes, so roughly a minute per video. We, were now, we can now look at our downloaded videos and confirm what we have. Or we can go directly into Plex, look at our YouTube channel, and find all of our videos ready to play. No ads and no recommendations. Safe to point the kids at and leave them watching the TV. So this wraps up the setup video. It is a complicated setup because there are several moving pieces. Feel free to follow along or jump into our Discord server at discord.elfhosted.com where you can talk to our team as well as to the developer of the Utah himself. And remember once again that if the setup is too complicated, you can just grab one of these tubling wizards, send us your details, and we'll set it up for you. Happy streaming!